um, let me put the um, meeting agenda into chat. There it is. And yeah, welcome everybody to today's Qbert community meeting. Uh, it is the 21st of February, which if memory serves, uh, means that we have a release next week. Hooray. Um, for those who are just coming in, if you could please add your name to the attendees list at the top here. Um, yeah, and uh, we like to start our meetings by welcoming any new people. So if you are new or haven't introduced yourselves in previous meeting, then um, I'll mute. And now's your opportunity to say uh, good day. Um, Andrew, we don't hear you. You're on mute. Hello? Yeah, now we can hear you. Now you can hear me. All right. Uh, how long have I been on mute for? <laughs> the whole thing? All right. Well, I, I think I muted. Uh, and we're waiting for people to introduce themselves. They didn't. I probably didn't unmute them. Looking at the schedule, uh, next week is our version 1.2 release. Uh, and I've got no reason to believe that um, it will be pushed back in any way. It's been a very quiet and calm uh, release, at least from uh, what little I hear about it. Uh, what's happening in our events? I haven't had a chance to update this, but this is still true. DevConf um, in mid-June in Bruno uh, has its CFP open until, what's that, two weeks' time, March the 3rd. Um, so by all means, um, submit something. It is great. You've heard me wax lyrical how much I love it. Um, I think it's really wonderful, and it's a really uh, – Last year, we had a whole bunch of Qbert people there, and it was, it was really cool. And we're looking at putting together, or at least applying for a Qbert workshop to be able to um, uh, look into um, helping new contributors understand what's going on with Qbert and what it means to, to um, participate and where the repos are, what they do, all that kind of thing, um, and then work through some issues. Um, all right, that's that. Now, there's nothing on the agenda. Um, but we have a few more things to go through. But if you if you are uh, struck by something, whether it's a question or um, just something you wanted to share with people, maybe what you're working on, um, we'll come back to the agenda. So if you want, you can you can throw it in here. We will return to it. And if I don't, uh, just tell me. So um, moving to the open floor, there is a design proposal that needs some attention. Um, so I went through the design proposals today and. Um, uh, asked all those that seem to have stalled or been forgotten about um, how we can continue moving them. This one, as I understand it, is just in need of. It's still interested. I couldn't see any reason why it's been holed up. I think it's just looking for further reviewers. Um, so I see... Uh, no, no. Yes, I'd like to highlight this as a please review. Um, it is about the DPA interface. This. Um, I vaguely remember people asking about this at a KubeCon last year. Um, so I know there's at least one person out there in the world, apart from the author, who's interested in this. Uh, and if this interests you, or if you would like to... Um, Give a look through, um, please do. Uh, 
and we can get it merged and the person can, can work on the feature. Do we have any questions about this? Nope. Uh, I think perhaps I'm just going to mute you, okay? I think I can. Yep. Boop. All right. Um, uh, my train of thought totally gone. Um, or is there anyone here that I can CC on this to be reminded that they might want to look at reviewing? A lot of silence. You can All right. See, if you nothing can gets. Oh, fantastic. Ed, I thought you were away this week on scholarly leave. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Now, the next point is not mine. Uh, so whoever added the QVERT coding guidelines and best practices, uh, please speak up. Uh, yeah, so I created this, uh, this issue to, to yeah, collect some ideas about best practices for the code base. So there's just a lot of refactoring and, and cleanups ongoing at the moment, and especially in the test code. And these are it's, it's like a brain dump of ideas, and ideally, we would uh, create a doc from that. So if anybody has any, any more ideas, uh, please add them, or yeah, please just, just comment your opinion on it. Giving folks a quick chance to read through this. this is awesome. Um, I fully support you in your endeavor. Um, last week I was, or the week before, I was cleaning up some of the um, um, Sonar Cloud, one of our um, code analysis tools. Uh, and we've long had a, a, a failing grade. And um, we now look pretty good on the new code stuff, but there's a bunch of things in there. It, it's, I think, particularly good um, slash frustrating at picking up duplicated lines and uh, needless complexity. Um, so I noticed that this is, you've got an additional context of the SIG code quality. I wonder if we can tie these things together um, as a way of A, having the guidelines, and then B, having a group of people who semi-regularly go through some of the things that get flagged and either ignoring them because they're not relevant, because uh, the machine's not perfect, or indeed uh, following up from that to decomplexify and deduplicate uh, some of the uh, code we have in there. That's probably something I should add to your issue. <laughs> Instead of just vaguely that talking about it. <laughs> All right. It, um, we have set. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so this is awesome. I, I, I had a slight comment. So, is the plan for translating this issue into some kind of guideline document? Um, the the reason why I'm asking is um, there is a parallel call happening um, on Tuesdays nine nine a.m. P EST. Um, about SIG API and API related discussions. And we are finding, uh, we are in need of, of you know, some guidelines and, and documentation there as well. So if this is going to be converted to a guideline doc, um, I think finding a place uh, to accumulate all of those different kinds of guidelines would be great. Um, and we can add, um, all the discussions related to SIG API and the API guidelines there as well. So um, I, I'd be curious of 
curious in terms of where this is going to end up. Yeah, that's that's basically the plan to to create a doc, and it would be great to to join uh, the SIG API efforts with this and uh, combine them. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Yeah, maybe we can come up with a guideline folder and then have different um, subject matter related guidelines um, readmes in in that um, and collect it that way. Sure. So, so you say you're discussing this on Tuesdays. Uh, not specifically this topic regarding um, code code guidelines, but yeah, in in Tuesday's call, um, we are definitely coming. You know, discussing different guidelines related to you know what kind of API patterns make sense, how how we need to consider upgrade compatibility, things like that. Okay, so uh, do you want me to, to bring this up in one of the next meetings? Yeah, sure. Okay, then I'll do that. Great. I I just think that the, I think the comment was mainly about where to put it. Maybe Andrew can find us a place. So I think the we had the several uh, documents that or guidelines like this that are developer uh, oriented. And then we don't have really a place to put them. The current documentation is about user guide, not about developer guide. Uh, until now, we placed a lot of documentation like that are developer uh, related under cover cover docs. But this one sounds like uh, it's, it may be better to put it in a more common place. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Maybe Andrew can suggest a place. The um, yeah, we we do require some light detangling of some of this. We've got um, a couple of contributing guides uh, around. Um, I did a bit of work, I think, a couple of months ago to try and link our user guide and then kind of use that as a central point to oh, well, the the one we find in our user guide to link out to some of the other ones. I know Aurel is working on some developer specific documentation, um, which uh, I think Aurel's on the line. Um, that's going into the, the same Qubit Qubit docs uh, folder that Ed mentioned, right Aurel? Yeah, but that one is, uh, it's really Qubit Qubit pro project related. So many parts here are generic, like the code guideline, and the API policies, stuff like that, they are cross projects. Usually it's like, should be an org thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me do that thing that I like to do to other people. All righty. And I'll add something here so folks can keep me honest. Let's go live. Also got CG API. Considering some sure efforts. Uh, oh yeah, and if you ever um, uh, t <laughs> take offense at anything I write in terms of these notes, by all means, please change it. Um, I'm actually terrible at note taking. All right, thank you, Felix, for bringing that up. That's that's uh, yeah, I think I think much needed, and now's a really good time for it. Um, unless we had any more questions about that or comments, we'll move on to pull requests. Yeah, not from my side. Cool. All right, I did see that. I believe Alexander. We jumped under this already. Let's just check. Um, so this is a refactor. Uh, ah, yes, he did. And he's asking. Got a bunch of test values. All right. Um, if anyone is interested, um, a new user has. They first raised this issue, I think, yesterday, the day before. 
and now they've contributed this is their first PR as a major refactor. Um, read it's what 84 files. And I'll give you a chance to read a translate of the description here. So this is the stuff that it fixes. Um, if anyone else is interested in, in having a look through that, And in fact, while I've got a couple of people here, like, well, I just saw Felix, you've got the SIG code quality in your thing, and I see Aurel here, he's been talking about SIG code quality. I'm um, uh, already uh, looking uh, into it. You're looking into it? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but would I just put uh, like SIG code quality here? Is that, are that like, does that, would, does that tag people? Does that make people who are in SIG code quality? Do we have an official org? I think you can put it. It's a, it's a sign that it's related. That's it. A sign. You can do slash sig space code dash quality. And that'll work as expected? I hope. <laughs> kind of optimism I come here for. By the way, I'm, I'm, I, the author of this PR is not here, right? No, they're not. Because the... Uh, the size of the, the I mean the size of this PR which relates more to how many files were changed is pretty high and it will probably cause a lot of problems to the author. Um like it will collide with many for the other PRs. That's uh I don't know So So you think this should be split into um separating each of the changes yeah, it should be considered in general i think uh, uh as a random contributor then it's 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 fine if it, everything works fine but uh i'm just saying that it based on how how things are going now a lot of files are touched and this can cause a problem but let's see fair enough and is that a consideration of the coding guidelines? Maybe we could add a, a PR guideline, like to try to make commits small and focused and PRs also small and focused. Uh, there are some guidelines like this, but, uh, but I think the guidelines are fine with uh, guidelines. The guidelines works with the the ones that contribute all the time, not with the uh, someone that comes once every few every period of time and sends something. I mean, if it's possible to to merge it as is, fine. But I'm saying it can cause can be difficult. Let's see. Let's see if uh, let's see the first review round, and then we'll see how it goes. Sounds good. All right. RLM, uh, you've got next two uh, PRs. Did you want to talk about these? Yes, sure. So this PR is uh, documenting how Qubit handles eviction requests. It was broken off uh, the proposal for the scheduler support that was uh, discussed here last week. And if anyone is interested in reviewing how Qbert currently handles uh, eviction requests, so this is the place. It's uh, mainly we'll use for uh, developer documentation and as a helping document or a helper document for the descheduler proposal. Does anyone have questions regarding this document?
So maybe we could go to the other one. Uh, I, I have a quick question. Um, is, is this something that is also relevant to users? It could be diluted a bit to also fit users. Maybe In which case, yeah, I mean, simplified and maybe users could uh, be more aware of what happens when they try to drain their nodes, for example, and why doesn't it uh, succeed? Yeah, but users don't care how, they care that it will happen. Uh, this is how. Yeah, yeah. This is how. We need to simplify it and just tell them when eviction strategies are this and that, this and that will happen, not on not the, the entire process. No one cares about the process okay. as a user. I care, Aurel. I care. Um, but I, from my memory, and anyone, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you said is currently now documentation. I think. But maybe Can you please repeat the question. Um, I was just saying, I, I think what you described should be in the user guide, I think is there. But like what happens uh, with eviction with the different strategies are in place. Do you want to take it offline together and see if it's there? Sure. We'll move on to the next one. Break, break, double muted, sorry. Yes, no, that is absolutely in the uh, documentation at this time. I just reviewed a PR like a week and a half ago about that. Awesome. Thanks to you for breaking through your mutes. So this one is also from a week ago. And if you remember the discussion on the mailing list regarding uh, starting developer documentation project, there were two goals. One was to document how a VM is started, and this one is quite hard. And the other one was to document what happens to a cluster when you deploy Qvert on it. So this is the second goal. And uh, this document describes what Qvert installs, but uh, not with a lot of details. You will have to install Qvert and do a lot of kubectl get commands in order to see all the details, which makes this document not very detailed, but also not very prone to changes. So the only things that would cause a change in this document is a, an object added or removed or renamed. This helps, this could help uh, security personnel to understand which uh, cluster rows or which ARBA rules are we using and also it would help developers and maybe users to understand the boundaries of the projects like where it starts and where it ends. Sounds great. So I guess the lingering question is uh, who wants to help review it? Uh, you can ping me, Andrew. O S S F O S S. Just a good one, yeah. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. Uh, also, I don't think we did the same for this one. Was there anyone who was interested in, did we? In the handling eviction requests. Would anyone also like to uh, review this? It has some reviewers, so not a must. I'm sorry? It has some reviewers, so not a must. Oh, OK. All right. I'll, I'll still leave another five seconds, just kind of see if anyone wants to jump onto it. CC. Anyone? All right. 
That's me alone. I'm going to leave that there just in case anyone wants to take the opportunity before this meeting ends. All right, and we have another one. Did I put this here or did someone else put this here? Oh, I think I put this here. Uh, Federico, you are in the call. Did you want to speak to this? Yes. Well, uh, this is a... Well, currently we are in, in QVirt, in the client Go. Uh, we are using the client generator uh, to generate the client set for the sub-resources, for example, clone or uh, uh, ex uh, export and uh, some other sub-resources. While for uh, the other core resources, such as uh, virtual machines, virtual machine instances, or replica sets, and so on, we are just using our uh, custom implementation of the client Go. And uh, yeah, basically, this is the first step of the introduction to uh, of using the client generator to generate our client uh, to generate the client. Uh, instead of the, our custom uh, uh, implementation. In this way, we will have some uh, uh, homologated uh, uh, signature for get, create, and uh, uh, you know, other methods. And uh, yeah, this is the first step. Uh, so just the introduction of the new client and just wrap the, uh, the, generate, the custom uh, method re redirect the, the the call that get uh, in the custom um, in the custom struct just to re redirect the uh, the method to the uh, generated client one uh, for those uh, that exist and uh, yeah as I said is this is a, just the first step and uh, it will require some other step just to uh, create the full conversion uh, of uh, using the client, uh, the generated client instead of our uh, custom one. Hey, um, I had a quick uh, comment. So I think it will be helpful to, um, in, in the PR description to enumerate what are the benefits of this. Um, and what are the, the, sorry? The benefits of doing this exercise of converting okay. in, yeah, I, I think in, in general, this is a good thing because we are, you know, getting degenerated clients, but as I see, there is one uh, potential thing to call out, which is anytime the generator changes the, the signatures or the way it generates, um, client, it, it will require us to, to do a lot of, um, changing on our side as well. So. Biggest example was sometime few releases, well, 10 or so release back, Kubernetes introduced the context um, in all the getters and listers. And that led to a lot of code changing because anyone who calls get on that had to add a context. So um, I'm just saying that this is something we need to also consider that anytime the code generator will change the way it generates those methods, we will have to take on a lot of refactoring. So, um, yeah. yeah, sure. I will, for sure, I will add the uh, benefits and disadvantages for uh, in the PR description. Uh, it's my bad. I found that I, uh, that they was added, but actually they were not. Uh, so yeah, mm, I will uh, uh, add them there so that we can have a discussion. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Alay, did you want me to CC on this uh, for review? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Thank you. Federico, do you also plan to create uh, informals? It is not in my plan uh, currently, but yeah, this uh, I think that 
this open to a lot of uh, uh, extension. My plan was uh, currently just to create the generated client that we can use also the fake client and uh, will allow us to have uh, some unit test uh, more near to the reality. This is the first uh, uh, the first option that I have, at least. Yes, this is uh, this is very good. I really support this effort. Also, I think another effort that we should consider is cleaning cleaning up the API directory, which currently contains more than it should, and it's not organized properly, in my opinion. What directory? Sorry. The API directory, the one that uh, from it, all of this is generated. All right. Thank you. All right, if there's um, yeah, nothing more on that, then we'll move on to the sneaky next one. I see that we've got two Ed, you've also got a comment here about 11099. Did you want to add that to the list? I, I don't think we'll have any problems with time. No, it's uh, it's about the, the this one specifically was a mark for for release as a release blocker. And then so the, you started with the GA date, right? Next week. Yes, but there is a blocker now. So the question is, will this this one is not even merged in the in, in main, and then it needs to be backported. So I I try to understand if what's I'm going on. Up what you've been down. All right. Actually, so, um, to add to that list, I I have one more release blocker as well, uh, that I just sick sneaked in in the need help bullet point. So I think we have two blockers. Yeah, so if there is a release blocker, first of all, uh, it needs to be labeled like this one. And I don't understand who is who will decide. Uh, someone needs to decide what to do because I guess we have only one week and this one is very close. Or you will decide to delay it or I don't know. I just saying. Is this because I said everything was calm and quiet at the start of the meeting? Oh, we are trying to do some uh, some drama. So <laughs> we'll be bored. Well, thank you, thank you. All righty. Um, so it looks like uh, this, I guess, is more of an FYI. It seems to have a lot of attention on it at the moment. Um, so, yep. Uh, I'm just going to copy this. Um, so the, the, by the way, there are two problems. One is it needs to reach LGTM approved. That's for sure really quick. And then it needs somehow priority to get into the to be merged because currently the queue of, of PRs in the merge is is uh, huge. And so it's like a pure luck if something gets in like in, in a few days. So this needs to be taken care of. If it's like high priority, the others should be hold and then let this one in. So once it has the correct approve, approvals. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see Stu's on the line. Um, in fact, I've heard his voice. Um, I'm going to presume that he's all over this. Double mute, Stu.
Okay, this one is labeled. Yeah, that Andrew, that PR was me. Um, I was trying to add a release blocker label to it, and I couldn't. The the bot rejected my request. Um, gotcha. Oh, I think somebody. Um, yeah, Luba's all over it. Okay. Yeah, then I don't think we need uh, anything of this PR, but again, this PR has very similar um, priority requests like the other one. Gotcha. All righty. By the way, are we sure that there are no others like this one? It's like I'm a bit, I'm a bit uh, concerned now. <laughs> that like in the last minute we uh, we find find this one. In general, everything that was added in in from the previous one point one release until now. If any one of them, any one of these APIs need a fix, it's like this is the only chance to fix it. Um. I I I, um, I think I had some automated tooling to to find out uh, changes. I'm not sure if that will still be valid. I will see if I can run that on on current one point two, um, and you know get get a pointer if something is um, broken or needs attention. I'll try to do that. Sounds good. I think we can look at all the API changes. Bum, 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 bum. Do not merge. It's old. Um, since he's here, I'm just going to presume that um, Stu's on top of everything. <laughs> also, our uh, um, vaunted uh, Qvert approvers for the Qvert Qvert repo. Um, but I've got those two flagged at least. All right, so it may be an exciting release after all. Um, a couple of things on the mailing list. Unless anyone has anything to add to that. Uh, this question came through well, yesterday or today. Um, development environment uh, with an Apple M processor. Uh, does anyone have any experience with building this on Apple? I'm not aware of anybody trying this yet. So he's, uh, I assume that's a he, uh, is um, kind of a trailblazer, unfortunately, in this area. This is, I know that um, Kubevert works in a container, but this is the client side. And so, you know, a lot of our assumptions are around like Podman, for instance, which um, is, as far as I know, very Linux specific, uh, especially for kernel reasons. So I don't know how well it's going to work cross-platform as a developer like that. Hmm. Um, hey, Stu, any chance you'd like to uh, put that in a uh, text response? Yes, I will do that. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Uh, there was another thing. Um, I don't have it in the minutes. We have actually talked about this uh, a little while ago. We do actually have someone who has to, uh, stepped up, which is super awesome. But uh, yeah, the Qubit client Python repo. And I'll talk about some of the issues um, that have come up that aren't being looked at. Um, and yes, if you are interested in being a more of a, a gardener style maintainer of the um, client Python repo, as I understand it, it is automatically generated. And so it really is just looking after the occasional um, issues with dependencies. And when someone says, hey, this isn't working, here's my fix, then reviewing that fix to ensure it's fine. Um, if that uh, appeals to you and you're interested in taking on uh, a small amount of responsibility in a repo, um, then this is the place for you. Um, please reach out to me on this uh, thread or uh, offline. Both are fine. And we'll put you in touch with one of the, um, someone who was involved in the project uh, several years ago to provide a bit of, um, a bit of their part. Help you on board is the wrong word, but I got nothing else. Bug scrub, I saw nothing. Hence my little celebration man. Uh, and we've got two flaky tests um, real quick uh, before we run out of time. Uh, these are just little celebrations. Um, Ed, Ed's still here. Ed, did you want to um, give just a little bit saying what you did here and why we're celebrating your test fixes? I don't know why you're celebrating. It's a, it's a, it's a shame show now. <laughs> um, no, it's a... This flake is because um, most of the end-to-end -end tests are, are using VMI to create the to create the virtual machine and not the VM object. And in these specific cases, we used uh, VM. They used the v virtual machine object. The problem is that uh, when the virtual machine object is created, it takes time until the VMI object is created as a sub subsequent uh, to that. And here there was an assumption that uh, the VMI object for sure already exists. So in, in slow cases, it does not exist yet. Uh, that was the flake. So what happened in, uh, in the end is that we used here VMIs directly, not through, we didn't create the virtual machine through the VA, through the VM object, but through the VMI object. It's a, I don't know, too much details maybe, but that was the, it, it happened in, actually in two tests we identified. Um, see, for you that's a shame, but for me this is why we celebrate it. This is a very simple thing that was caused by uh, an easy assumption. And it's kind of nice to uh, showcase these things as a way of learning from them. Um, to prevent it happening in the future, I think. Um, so thank you. Yeah. And we have another one, which I think is Federico's, and I think we talked about it. The last week before it merged. But I'm going to bring it up anyway, because now it's merged. Oh, no, it's Antonio's. I don't see him here. There it is. Make it faster. Hmm. Uh, not a Lugo nor Antonio are here. Uh, and we're running out of time, so I'll leave interested people to have a poke at that. Uh, and see what was done on their own time. Now let's have a quick look, see if anyone added anything to the agenda. They did not. Uh, I'll just leave a few minutes silence here in case anyone has something they'd like to throw in at the last minute. I'll take that as a no. Thank you everyone for joining us today and for um, looking at all this stuff. Um, and for all of your work, in getting version 1.2 out, hopefully next week, those two blockers um, notwithstanding. Uh, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Have a lovely weekend. And we'll see you all next week.